hello everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel today it's time again for a challenge card that i did with my crafty friends uh, so for this card the challenge was making a slim card using the dandy day from l'enfant so here you can see uh, my card base and my panel that i'm going to use and the size of it uh, on that blue post-it um, just for reference Next up, I'm going to stamp out my images, which are all from the dandy day. And I'm stamping it out onto Stratmore Bristol Smooth because I am going to color with my Zikling Color Wheel Brush Markers. It has been a while, um, but <laughs> my blender ran out and I finally got a new one. So I can do some no line coloring again, which I am going to do today. So I am stamping these images twice um, in this video, although I am only going to use one sheet, uh, but I was first thinking about needing maybe more than just one image of each. Uh, but in the end this card is going to be one with the use of every image except for one being the leaves for at the bottom of uh, Dendi, um, but the rest is all used in this card, uh, but at this moment I didn't know yet where I was going with everything, so stand it out twice. So for the no line coloring I am using my Ink on 3 fade out no line coloring detail ink, which I really really like for this purpose. Um, so far I also haven't tried anything else, so that may be a bit of a biased way, but it works perfectly, so I'm actually not looking for anything new or so. Um, so yeah, I really like it. That's important. So, and once the stamping is done, I can start with the coloring. So for the coloring, I am listing the zig colors below each time per image, so that you can have some sort of reference. I try to color everything at the same time, uh, when it was about the same sort of image. Um, you will see what I mean with that. Uh, I'm also showing my uh, zigs before I start coloring for if you don't know which colors are listed below or when they are used just trying some things out while filming um, you can always say what you prefer just seeing them once or just seeing the words or <laughs> both it's it's all a possibility I just need to know what you guys prefer because you are the ones I'm making these videos for so <laughs> So as you can see here what I'm doing is I'm tracing that ink from the ink on tree with my zigs. I really find it handy having the zigs to do some no line coloring. I myself I am struggling with no line coloring with my Copic markers because that brush tip is just too flexible and too thick so maybe I should buy those other nibs um, but I haven't so far so I prefer coloring with my zigs when doing no line coloring and then I take my blender and I blend those colors out and then I go back in with the same color just to get give some more dimension onto my images and that's what I do for the rest I'm not doing anything fancy although I think that when you're coloring no line coloring um, that it looks really fancy it's like I have drawn it myself and truly I cannot draw anything that's why I use stamps for my cards <laughs> um, but I really like the result with uh, these zigs and the no line coloring ink so for the rest of the coloring I will be putting on some music to make it a bit more pleasant for you guys to see and I will be back after all the coloring is done
Now that the coloring is done, I am using the matching dies to die cut all these elements. And next up, I am going to try out how I am going to place all these elements onto this slimline card. Now that I have some sort of an idea how I'm going to place everything, I can start with my background. So this background is created with stencils all over. So I have taken the grassy hillside stencil from L'Enfant as well, as well as the grassy stencil. And then for the sky I'm using the clouds stencil from my favorite things. So onto this background I am going to use lots and lots of distress inks starting with the crushed olives. And for this card I decided to add something extra to my background <laughs> being splatters. Um, so you will see in a few seconds my grass is created by crushed olives as well as mowed lawn. And then after I am done with creating different layers of grass. I am going to add some splatters from the same inks as I am using on those areas. So here I am trying to mask off the sky and I'm just going to splatter with that crushed olives and mowed lawn. And then afterwards I will continue with my sky. So for the sky I have a combination of a lot of colors. Uh, starting with the peacock feathers and I'm just blending it on top of those grassy hills. To get the sky going and then I'm taking that stencil and I'm going to use it to create those clouds. After the peacock feathers it's time to use evergreen bow, then I'm using stormy sky followed by wilted violets and in the end I end up with picked raspberry. And then same as with the grass, I am going to splatter with these colors all over the sky but trying to limit it to the clouds that are in the same color. So I will go over some other colors as well because of course when you're splattering you cannot control everything but I'm trying to limit it to the same color where I am splattering. But you will see that after all the blending is done.
So now that my background is finished, I still need to find out how I am going to add a sentiment to this card. So therefore I decided to first place all the elements back on my card, see where everything should be positioned. And then I will be taking my stamping help. Then I will be taking my stamping tool and I will first add my sentiment to this panel. And therefore I decided, you will see it in a few seconds, that I was going to use the color that was beneath the sentiment to stamp it out. So as you all know from each Distress ink, there is almost a Distress Oxide ink and I really like stamping out my sentiments in a specific color or just heat emboss it when I am doing some no line coloring because stamping your sentiment with black will really stand out from everything else uh, being the only thing uh, black. So I prefer using some softer colors uh, to stamp out all the sentiments. And in this case, I will be using Distress Oxide ink, Picked Raspberry and Peacock Feathers because that's the same color as the, the Distress ink that I used beneath it. So now that my sentiments are stand out, I can start with adhering all the elements. And because I didn't want to shift any of the images, I really like the placing at this moment. I decided to glue everything on this panel while it was still lying in my stamping tool, just to be sure that everything would stay in the same spot. And now you can see I'm using some liquid glue from Tombow. Um, 
to glue some pieces on top of this panel as well as some thin foam squares from scrapbook adhesives. And as soon as everything is adhered, the only thing left to do is to adhere this panel on top of my card base. And therefore I will be using some Scotch 3M foam tape which will lift this panel up a bit and create some more dimension. And then this card is finished. I hope that you like this card design. I am really proud of how the background turned out. Uh, I really like those stencils from Long Fawn. Uh, it's so easy to get those different layers going on. Um, so that's my favorite part, the background. If you have a favorite part, you can always leave them down below. I am so curious to, to see and to know what you guys like about this card. Um, you can also give this card a thumbs up if you want. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!